Before I explain the story of Viscount Unland's rise to power, I have a few quick notes. The first is that while this story is most certainly based on the lore of Twilight Imperium, like my video concerning Harug Gafara, there is definitely a lot that we don't know, so I had to fill in the gaps with my own events and situations. That said, I feel this story is true to the source material, and to the game, and it captures the spirit of known barony lore. Second, Latin of society is confusing, so let me do a quick breakdown. The best I can figure is that there are powerful families, or dynasties, depending on which source you're reading, which vie for power in the barony. These families each are headed by a baron, who serves as the patriarch of that family. Viscounts, on the other hand, are barons of particularly powerful families who the baron elevates to his inner circle. They serve as an elite class above even the barons, helping the baron to rule the Letnev. Finally, the most powerful and savvy of the barons becomes the baron of the Letnev. Think a King of Kings situation, but instead it's a baron of barons. This baron of the Letnev rules all of the barony, but can be overthrown by the other families through treachery, assassination, or other such power plays. Confused yet? I hope not, because we have a story to get to. That of Viscount Unland's rise to power. The Unlin family has controlled the black, smog-coated city of Farouk for as long as any Letnev can remember. It's said they won it from the failing Samrak family during the final days of the Twilight Wars, and since then, the Unlins have ruled the Dunlin Crater with an iron fist. They've faced many challengers, up-and-coming Letnev families hoping to increase their own power and wealth. But thus far at least, the Unlin have remained secure, thwarting every attempt at their high station. In that security, many Unlins have simply settled, content in their rule of Ark Prime's only surface city. But like many highborn Letnev, there are those in the Unlin family who remain ambitious, and they have set their sights on greater things for themselves and their family name. One such Letnev noble was Nikas, third son of the aged Baron Unlin, head of the Unlin family. Nikas was born into great comfort and wealth, yet even from an early age he eschewed such luxuries. As a young man, Nikas would often take long, solitary treks across the inhospitable surface of his home world, or would prowl the dark warrens of Farouk with his trained Datar hounds. When at home, he ceaselessly practiced combat of all types, especially fencing, a skill which he would train religiously for much of his life. Nikas was ambitious, and he saw this regimen as a way to back up that ambition with cold steel. By the age of 16, the ambitious Letnev was already rising through the ranks of the barony military. He was made a captain of the Triad-class cruiser Savlos at 19, becoming the youngest captain in the Letnev navy. It was at this same time that he became the sole heir of his father's title, gutting his elder brother with a concealed dagger before pushing him from the airlock of the Savlos. It would be less than a year before Nikas would complete his ascendancy, slipping undetected into his father's bedchamber one night and as per Letnev tradition, slitting the old Baron's throat. Now the Baron of the Unlin family, Nikas began to maneuver his way into the upper echelon of Letnev nobility. While his late father may have been satisfied to sit complacent on his family's laurels, Nikas wanted the Unlin name, his name, to be known and feared throughout the stars. His first move in accomplishing this was to seize political control of the small, 
arid moon Wen, which orbited distant Renterra. He did this through a series of extortions, bribes, and assassinations, many of which were carried out by his young nephew Victor, a well-placed Semfin agent. Before two years had passed since Nikas Unlin was named Baron, he had already added another title to his name, Lord of Wen, and such accomplishments are not overlooked in Letnev society. Baron Unlin now had many enemies among the barony's upper class, but none could doubt the young man's competence when it came to climbing the ladders of power. Even the Baron was beginning to take notice. Impressed by Nikas's accomplishments, Baron Daz Imasil Vorkan III, ruler of the Letnev, named Baron Unlin Master of Blades, which is to say, Supreme Commander of the Letnev Navy. Then, the Custodial Wars began. It was during these wars that Baron Unlin truly showed his prowess. Leaving the rule of Wen and Farouk to his trusted nephew Victor, Unlin set out across the stars aboard the Letnev Navy's flagship, intent on conquest. With soul forces tied up defending against the L1 threat, Unlin was free to carry out his Baron's wishes to seize the distant suns of the galaxy for the Letnev. Beginning with Quan, the barony began to seize system after system, with Unlin leading the fight. After Quan came Starpoint, then the industries of the Rigel system. No real resistance was encountered, and the Letnev were growing confident, until the arrival of the Nasroka fleet. An armada of over a hundred ships emerged from the Beta Wormhole, completely undetected on Barony scanners. Using advanced lightwave deflectors, the Alliance fleet plunged deep into Barony space, intent on seizing Ark Prime. Things looked desperate, but this would be Unlin's finest hour. Turning his fleet, Baron Unlin made for Tirana the only system standing between the Nasroka and his home. Hard burning his mass drives, he arrived just in time aboard the infamous Ark Secundus, surprising the Nasroka fleet at dock on Tirana. Blockading the system, Unlin waited for his whole fleet to arrive before commencing the attack. The Letnev far outnumbered the Nasroka, who had counted on speed and surprise to win the day. The Alliance forces died in darkness, the barony fleet blocking out the planet's sun. Only a single carrier and three destroyers escaped the conflict, making for the Beta Wormhole and the safety of Alliance space. But Baron Unlin wouldn't allow them even that. The Ark Secundus gave chase, catching the Nasroka ships just before they plunged through the Quan Wormhole. He pummeled the Alliance carrier with cannon fire, even allowing the destroyers to escape in order to send a message. Four divisions of Nasroka soldiers died that day, aboard the helpless carrier. No further incursions were made by the Nasroka Alliance to that side of the galaxy for the entirety of the Custodial Wars. For his service to his Baron, Unlin was made a Viscount the second highest rank in the barony. But ever ambitious, the newly named Viscount Unlin began to consider how he could seize the highest rank, that of Baron of the Letnev. But that's a story for another time.